right, so this is meaning two. Yep. Meaning two. Um, and we're at top of the block diagram. And like I said, what we really want to focus is on a block diagram for like a 300-ish dollar. Sure. We want to get it back, but sure. that kind of thing versus um, we don't know if we'll get it back or versus um, we can do this, you know, three times a month if we right. have the money for the gas. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and I came to, I'm going to try to seed this a little bit as a facilitator just to kind of get us off on the right track. I came to the launch back in December. So I kind of, from a meta system level, from the overall system, right. the big boxes seem to me to be the setup system, the bits and pieces you mm -hmm. need to actually prepare the right. balloon for flight, right. the flight vehicle itself, because I don't want to call the balloon because there's a balloon in the flight vehicle that's actually right. listing agent. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And there's so many other pieces there that we want to capture in that piece of the system. And then there's the tracking system, the, the, the chase vehicles. Right. Would that be, am I missing anything um, from the big breakdowns in terms of uh, the overall system architecture? Uh, well, apart from uh, maybe something to help bring it down uh, safely, so uh, like a parachute. I was thinking that'd be part of the flight system. Though, okay. The, yeah, anything, flight system I'm thinking yeah. that you, you got a, you got some bring box. It bring it down, yeah. Right. Okay. That is the whole balloon. Sure. Sure. With its payloads and everything, then you've got the box that is set up, yeah. and you've got the box that is chase. <clears throat> And then everything, basically, the, the, the breakdown of this, the, the, the boundaries for these subsystems are everything that is physically attached to the balloon during flight. Right. You've got everything that you have to unpack in order to prepare the flight vehicle. Mm -hmm. But then you immediately pack back into the vans because you're done with it. You don't need right. it again the next time you fly. And then you got the bits that are, how do we know where it went so that we can get to it and right. get it back. Right, right. Yeah, in terms of essentials, I think that's it. We okay. have a bunch of other stuff that we use in the, the, to help with the recovery that okay. isn't essential. Um, uh, ranges from uh, extendable poles in case they ah yeah yeah, yeah 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 so this is up in a tree. yeah yeah that's actually great I think that's important it's so it's not chase essential and recovery yeah. we're talking about which is the this is going to be the kind of stuff that will be in here is the stuff that we need for tracking right on the ground, from the ground. So there's obviously tracking bits that'll be over here for yeah. telling us where it right. is, but there's bits that listen to that signal. Right. And I think it's a very good point. I had forgotten because we had it land right on the ground. Right. We, yeah. <laughs> recovery was get out of the car and go, look, <laughs> it's our balloon. And our, there's our cameras. Um, so tracking from ground and um, recovery aids like poles. And then what I read, what I am, what I was thinking when I was mapping out the facilitation of this was um, that we would just that if I was missing a big box, we would add the big box, sure. and that we could just dive into each of these boxes separately right. Right. and enumerate the major components. Mm -hmm. And the other big thing that I was hoping that we would do is identify which of them are things that you buy off the shelf. Like the balloon mm -hmm. itself, the envelope right. for the balloon is something right. to go in order. Yep. We we should be able to get part numbers yep. and vendor and identify and basically yep. just put it in the bomb right away. Yep. This is something you have to buy. Versus if we we're going to do the cut down system, and I and Ken mentioned when we we're wandering around, yep. that that's something that's actually kind of optional. It's nice to have, but not strictly required. Yeah. Or small enough, right. and things like that. Right. And we may, because of budgetary concerns and simple and, and simplicity sure. concerns, say, well, let's not do one this time. Right. Um, if we think we'd be successful without it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but if it was in there, it'd be probably an example of something that had to be built. Mm -hmm. Right. That there are there's something that we would need drawings, we need right. electronics information, we would need a bomb and assembly right. instructions right. for. Yeah. To my knowledge, nobody has. Uh, Marketed uh, a cut down system. Right. So that would be an example. So those are kind of the two classes, and we right. need to mark because obviously the things that we need to just buy, yeah. we need to get the information from you, but then we're done. We document right. it and we're done. But the things that need to be built, well, now it's about we need right. drawings, we need 
software, yeah. we need the source code, if it's software, bubble, right. everything else that right. goes with it. Mm -hmm. And so we mark those in this first pass, mm -hmm. and then we spend the rest of the day going through the things that are designed and built, mm -hmm. diving into those details and right. finding all that information and getting them put together. Gotcha. And so what I'm hearing is these are our three blocks. Yeah, I think so. It, it makes sense. Like I said, I went through an entire mission. I didn't do any of the prep, right. but I it, like right. I showed up day of launch before it was even assembled. I watched it get filled and tied together, and I watched us chase it down and get it. So that it, I had a pretty good sense of where yeah. we were going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm very grateful to you guys let us have an oh, earlier trip to, to even just see it way ahead of time. Welcome most any time. Yeah. So let's do. I want to start with the balloon. <clears throat> With, yep. the, with the flight vehicle itself. Right. I right. think the most detail is in there, and I think all the things that pin off to the other stuff sure. come from elements of the flight vehicle, mm -hmm. and then it'll be, we'll get the complex thing done, and we'll have great, we'll know where to draw lines to the other boxes for right. it. Right, right. Yeah. So, this is the flight vehicle uh, block diagram. So you're doing you're calling these separate diagrams? Well, I'm, it would be all one diagram in reality, but my flip chart isn't big enough. Like when we do okay. this in Google Docs on the drawing thing, Huge. I'm hoping the system is still simple enough that we can get it all in one drawing. Okay. Though, for future reference, I don't know how familiar you are with systems engineering and, and the more formal stuff that like Greg and I took grad yeah, classes as much as you and Greg. Yeah, yeah, so as you get into much more complicated systems, you get into bigger things, it's very, very common to have actually different sheets in a document that are the various layers of a diagram and there's a there's actually formal names for the various di for the various levels of detail of the diagram. And there's <coughs> what I just did on this first page where it's like this is the overall architecture. Everything that we're going to design and build fits is on this sheet. Now there's a lot more detail diving into it, but there are no pieces of it that we are responsible for that are not on this sheet. Okay. And that's a very common thing to have as the first level and you dive down as many levels as you need to document sufficiently you move on. Shepherd is small enough that we got away with one diagram yeah. and just did the layers inside of it. <coughs> I'm hopeful that Far Horizons Mark One is also of that scale, okay. just because right now working with simpler projects is better for us from a process management standpoint. Okay. But on my flip charts, I just don't have enough room, <laughs> so I'm going to yeah. turn pages as we dive into details. So imagine that this sheet is, so this sheet is this box, and we're just going to do this at enough resolution we can actually tell what's in it. So um, I can identify one piece right off the bat that we have to have. Yes. Some kind of balloon. Balloon. And I believe that I heard that you guys are using latex, helium-filled yeah. latex balloons. That's right. Yeah. All right. I, there is Maybe one. Not, might not be latex specifically. It could be uh, some some version of rubber. We've just okay. been referring to them as latex because uh, they I smell like them. that. I will put them in quotes. Yes, it could be no a rubberized balloon of some kind. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And so, if we think of it, if you're going to build it, I know you guys. I saw a chain, a train mm -hmm. version. Mm -hmm. I know you guys have that new stabilization unit you guys are experimenting right, with. Right, right. From a, you're just getting started, yeah. where would you start? Well, the, uh, the things that are necessary to have a successful flight, you need something to take it up. Check. So you've got a balloon. Mm -hmm. you've, got the, you've got to have something to bring it down safely. And so we use a, we use a parachute. So then we also, I'm going to have a little mm -hmm. notes field over here. So we need lift, mm -hmm. landing. Because mm -hmm. you can't send anything up. Uh, the, the, you know, the, it, you can't loft anything uh, that could pose a hazard should it should it should fall, fall on somebody say yeah. <laughs> Roger, uh, and that that uh, you know forms the the basis of the FAA rules okay. regarding uh, the the limits uh, to the size and and structure of uh, uh, unmanned free balloons. Um, but uh, so technically, as long as we follow those regulations, we, you know, we wouldn't miss, we wouldn't need a, a, a parachute. You know, we could just let things drop, and they'll hit the ground 
slow enough that they, they won't do major damage to things. Gotcha. But we want to be able to re recover things safely. Yep. <coughs> so we've Greg does have a question. We've yeah. got Greg Moran live in the oh, document okay. here. So yeah. it says, what capacity, how is this measured, yeah. lift, pounds, diameter, et cetera? Is that too specific for? That's too specific for the block diagram. We're, okay. we're going to, we'll identify that when we get okay. into design, into detailed design. I can tell you about the, you know, the, the way these balloons are sold. Uh, they're written in terms of the, the grams of uh, the balloons themselves. Gotcha. So, yeah. so when we actually go yeah. and specify a balloon or a, a set of options for balloons yeah. in the bomb, right. then we need that information yeah. down to, honestly, if we can get it, the part number at the vendor so right. that we can yeah. order the exact, th so we're all yeah. talking the exact yeah. same career. Yeah. But this is um, this is still at a, a little bit higher sure. level. It's identifying yeah. the pieces that we need to document and design. Yeah. Yep. So lift and landing. Yeah, lift, landing, and... Um, then the other necessary component to recover these things is to have some kind of tracker. Tracking. Yeah. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say payload because if we're not carrying a payload, it isn't very interesting. Sure. Well, well, uh, you could envision some kind of, of thing where you just, uh, you know, you you tie a, you know, a sack containing a cell phone. Um, but yeah, you've got to have some kind of infrastructure to hold things together, to connect things together. Yep. All right. And so I guess my other, so those are kind of the four essential mm -hmm. elements. We're, we're not done drawing this diagram until we right. put those, until at least those four pieces are there and anything that ties them together. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a system. Right, right. Right. Um, but then back to my other question, I've seen you guys do two configurations now, mm -hmm. the kind of long train yeah. and this kind of spread out right. critter, right. I don't know what to call it, it's this, this frame, so it's a frame mounted system right. or something. Right. Right. If you were, imagine you're us, you're sure. Greg over at QLab and Albuquerque, sure. yeah. would you start with a train or with the frame? Uh, where, which one? Wh where would you? Where is better for success? Right. Where do you guys have more experience? What makes sense to be the place right, you right. start? Yeah, uh, I, the the frame is specifically uh, an effort to help stabilize the, the payload. Okay. To, to re and, and there, when I say stabilize, I'm, I'm specifically meaning uh, reduce the rotation okay. of yep. the payload so that we get the uh, videos that don't make people motion sick. <laughs> uh, right. So this is a, a serious yeah, absolutely, yeah. We want to put this up on the on the dome here at the theater. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You're spinning around. So there's actually three times a second. Yeah, no, I've seen yeah. the video. It's, oh, yes. it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so the frame it was uh, really just an idea. Uh, what if we increase the moment of inertia of the payload? Sure. Is that going to reduce the spin? <coughs> yeah, it turns out it does work. Okay. Um, but that's. That design is specifically to to help stabilize the payload. Gotcha. So uh, so starting out a train is starting out a, a train, and maybe not even a train. I, the, the, I, the the reason for going with the train of payloads mm -hmm. is uh, so that we can accommodate the uh, the FAA rules. This is FAR ah, 101. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's specifically FAR 101 that we have to follow, and these are rules regarding. Uh, Regarding a host of things, but there's a section in there for uh, unmanned free balloons. That's what's there. <laughs> that's the key phrase right there. Unmanned free balloons. Okay. Yeah, I, I keep I, saying I, that. I think that's an important way the FAA must say it. Well, uh, I, I'm, yeah, I can't swear that that's the way that's in the the document. It might be some okay, my some minimum, minimum yep. synonyms of, of that. Uh, gotcha. but, uh, um, anyway, so so some of the requirements there are that the, the total and, and even then. Uh, there are ways to to go around that. The rule is that uh, if your balloon payloads uh, have a total weight of less than 12 pounds, uh, if uh, each individual component of the payloads has a weight of less than 6 pounds, and then there's some other rules like uh, uh, no component can weigh more than four pounds uh, unless it has a certain profile, a certain uh, uh, area. Okay. Uh, and then the connectors have to have a break between payload elements. Have to have a breaking strength no greater than 50 pounds. Now, if you accommodate all of those requirements, then you are not subject 
to the other requirements okay. for a man-free balloons, um, gotcha. which include filing a flight plan with the FAA, uh, updating them as to the status of it uh, when it comes down. You have to tell them when it's coming down. So there's a lot more um, uh, paperwork and uh, other things that are required if you exceed any of those gotcha. limits. Um, and just for flexibility's sake, uh, just to not make us do sure. uh, you know, more work than we need to, we've been following those, those guidelines. Gotcha. And we've been able to meet them because really uh, uh, the, the payloads we've sent up uh, have been small experiments. We've never had to send up you know, 100 pounds of uh, whatever. Right. Okay, so with that in mind then, so yeah, so I'm sorry, then just to get back to the yeah. original thing, yeah, the reason yeah, yeah, why yeah. we go with the train is because if we have payloads that weigh more than six pounds, uh, we break them up into separate payload boxes. Gotcha. Separated by con uh, connectors that uh, break at less than 50 pounds. Okay. So if we go with, again, this this first version, yeah. Yeah. we've obviously got the balloon that's providing our lift. Right. We've got, I assume, the ne is the next thing in the yes. in the chain a parachute? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we hook the uh, balloon up to the parachute. Uh, we have a short connector line. Uh, technically, you don't need a connector at all. Just hook it up to the parachute. But we use we use a line to connect the parachute. And the reason for going with this kind of arrangement, with just hanging everything from the balloon and then the parachute, so on, is that when once the balloon bursts and the payload falls, the parachute opens up. It's a, it's a completely passive uh, system, so it's uh, ridiculously reliable. Okay. And even is that also the case even if there's no cut down? Yes, that's okay. right, yeah. Because so the balloon can break and yeah. it'll still do what it It'll still do. work okay. Um, there have been a few times when we've had fragments of the balloon uh, tangle up in the parachute, and I know that other teams have had um, worse cases than, than we did, uh, where, where the parachute becomes completely tangled up. But that can happen even in the absence of the balloon, okay. if you don't have things rigged up properly. And then, uh, uh, hanging right off of the parachute, we have uh, uh, have a payload or payloads, yeah. I'm going to call the, this is a, so this is a payload structure. And so when you're talking about a simplified train, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're just talking about instead of doing multiple payloads, you would suggest just doing one, one box. Yeah. But yeah. it would still be in that same. It's still going to look like a train, it's just yeah. going to have right. Right pieces. <coughs> okay. Right, right. And yeah. conceptually, in this simplified version, you could put the tracking inside the payload Absolutely. structure instead Absolutely. of dangling yeah. as its own That's right. piece of the train. That's right. Okay, so then we have one of two things. Either this is the end of the train, or we have tracking, tracking signal, or inside of here is the tracking signal. Mm -hmm. That's some really atrocious writing. That's his tracking signal. And that that, that do it. That would do it. From yes. the flight vehicle standpoint. Yep. Yep. All right. That's all of the essential components, yeah. This is our block diagram for this. And real quick, let's go back through this list and look at the things that are things we can buy. Yeah. And that, especially on budget of $300, and right. things that we have to build. Right. So this is a thing we buy. Yes. The envelope is a thing we buy. Yeah. So. There are there are a few vendors. The, the one that we've worked with most is Kmont. K A Y M O N T. Gotcha. And, and I uh, think I think what will make the most sense is mm -hmm. 
um, before the end of the day to sit down once we have the whole list of things yeah. we have to just buy off the shelf. Right. It's just write them down in available materials and then say, right. who, who's the vendor? What's the part number? Are there options? And which and what are the part numbers and why would we choose those options? Right. But let's um, let's not get hung up on that yet until we get to there. I want to hold as much time for getting design documentation done as possible. Um, we're, I think what I'm hearing, at least from my point of view, if we can get away without the cut-down system, mm -hmm. it's one less thing to document right now. Yeah. Though I would like to come back and work with sure. you guys either virtually mm -hmm. over um, yeah. virtual over teleconference or as another visit mm -hmm. to get the cut-down system done as like a sub-project. Yes of the overall project because even if you're not going to use it with the far with a full Far Horizons build, folks might be interested in knowing how that was put together in its own uh, for its own sake. Right. But right, it's right. clearly you guys built it in relation to this. So I'd want to come right. back and do that as a sure. separate piece of documentation. Sure, sure. And then we could even build one of those and start using it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Then we've got the parachute for landing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I assume this is a, is this another thing that we just buy? We, we buy. Uh -huh. I just want to make sure I could imagine it going the other way. We have been using parachutes uh, from a place called the Rocket Man. It's uh, okay. parachutes for high power rockets. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, the payload structure, I've seen these floating around. This looks like something you guys built. Uh, yes, uh, you can go a variety of routes. You can, you can build it. Uh, we have built them out of a uh, few different kinds of things. Uh, typically, uh, Pink foam insulation, mm -hmm. uh, hot glued together, and then maybe tape on the outside or fabric on the outside. Okay. Or uh, you can just get a cooler. Uh, people, many people have used styrofoam coolers. Uh, other people uh, insulated lunch boxes. We use those for our trackers. Cool. Let's. Uh, so the, that'll be. Yeah. Okay. So that's a builder buy option. Yeah. But we should. We should look at what those look like in detail because yeah. that's definitely one that that's a decision point. That's not yeah. like yep. this is going to be get driven by how much you're carrying and yeah. things like that. This is driven by how much you're right. bringing back. Right. This, however, is a little bit more flexible. That's right. And then the tracking. The tracking, yeah. And and I'm assuming that you're not going to build that from scratch. Typically <laughs> not. Although okay. it, you know it is it is possible you could get the the transmitter. Uh, so if you feel like building yourself uh, some kind of radio system, you could do it yourself if you wanted to. We've never done that. OK. Um, not completely. We have, uh, we've done a few different things. In gotcha. The I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say TVD here. And this is going to be definitely a place yeah. we spend a lot of time this afternoon after yeah. we get through the block diagram. Right. So cool. That's this picture. Can you back up a little more and see where we're going to go next? I think we want to go set right next. Because then when we get to tracking, tracking is going to be another place we deal with radio stuff. Right. And then it'll be a nice segue into let's just dive right. into the radio stuff. It's the most complex thing. Right. Yeah, okay, there we go. Excellent. So this is the HAB setup system block diagram. And again, I've seen this, so I know a few pieces right. right off the top of my head. I knew there's, you need an area, like you need somewhere to right. set up. Right. So like kind of around this whole thing is the workspace. And I know there was a tarp used to protect the envelope right. from the rest of the environment in the workshop. In the right, right, yeah. Yeah, the, the balloon is fairly fragile. Again, I'm very grateful that I got a chance to come see this. Mm -hmm. um, because I can actually picture some of this sure. in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I saw is, I saw a few other things. I saw some sort of rig to connect the, there were the helium tanks. Right. You need the helium. He yep. Um, and you're, you're uh, Ken said you're doing all this in a hangar, right? 
We do. It's, well, it's certainly not necessary, but it's uh, very convenient for us. Okay. Because uh, one of the big hassles uh, during the build process is uh, wind. Yeah. So getting in some kind of protected space is always better. And then there's some mechanism to. There's a. I mean, there's a fill connector or some. I don't know what else yeah. they call it. Yeah. But there's some critter that, mm -hmm. and these are. This is hose, mm -hmm. right? There's a hose from the tanks mm -hmm. to some connector, right. and then the connector goes out to the loom. And that was, that's some sort of critter you guys yeah. built. That is, yeah, yeah. There's, there's another component between the okay. helium tanks and the hose. And yep. that's, a, that's a regulator. Okay, yep. And that's, uh, that's really something that's essential for safety purposes, for safety reasons. No. I, I say essential. For, for us, it, it absolutely is because, you know, school kids along. Uh, you might sure. be able to get away without it probably safely for a good long time. But the, the purpose of the regulator is to take the, the high pressure helium inside the tanks up to you know, 2,000 PSI and, and put it out at a much lower sure. pressure. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the danger with just using the helium straight out of the tanks is if you have any kind of per particulate stuff in there, you can, you can really blast it out at high velocity. Okay. If you, Somehow, that'd be know, bad. Have your hand obscuring the tank and you blast it out all of them. See, there are a number of things that could go wrong. Right? That'd be bad. It would be very bad. And is this something that you rent from the dealer when you get the tanks, or is it something you guys have it's to purchase? It's something we've, we've bought, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, for our first flight, is that something that's also, is, is there an option to rent the regulator? There is, okay. yeah. One can get around that by using uh, uh, just the, the regulator that comes with uh, some tanks for the purpose of filling small helium balloons. Okay. It's a pain using those, but it's possible to use those. Uh, I, I know from first-hand experience, because uh, I helped another uh, group uh, do a launch using just that kind of system this last uh, December. Okay. And it worked fine, but it's a, it's a pain. Okay. And in that case, they didn't even need the hose. They just uh, filled it off of that little uh, balloon filling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the it seems like a you long hold time. The, hold the nozzle of the balloon over that and, and, and lift the thing, and you hold it there for you know 15 minutes or so, however long. It's a pain in the butt. Gotcha. Yeah. But it's possible. Okay. Um, there's another one that I just remembered. What, what, gloves of some kind. Or yeah, that's again to protect the balloons mostly. And are they just cotton yeah. gloves or? Cotton gloves, yeah. You don't need any chemical protection. One thing potentially to note about this this, uh, this whole process here, I guess, mm -hmm. involving the balloons is uh, uh, if the balloons are, are latex, then uh, many people have latex allergies. So that's right. something you want to check out ahead of time because uh, you know if a latex glove is bad enough, but imagine you know, yeah. <laughs> an entire mass of Ten stuff. Ten feet of latex. Yeah. And the stuff can stink. Yeah. So that's actually a thing that we should probably capture, Jeremy. Is um, when we get to doing launch operation documentation, when we do st we create documentation for launching the launch tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We should also create a, a, a set of safety policies, and one of them should be one of the things that needs to go in there should be to check if anyone has allergies to the material of the balloon. Okay. Yeah. And then there was a scale. And then the scale, yeah, so we can monitor the, the free lift of the balloon. That's very handy, but yeah, not essential. And that's another thing that basically connects yeah. at the balloon yeah, temporarily. Yeah, right, that's right. Okay. I, I'm it's sorry, I was trying to finish. Yep, that's all right. Things. So is that is that like a uh, a scale you'd use for weighing like produce or something like that? Yeah, is that like yeah. that style scale? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we use uh, you we use, use like a luggage scale, scale uh, fish okay. scale. Yeah. 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 Though it would sure be nice if the uh, display was the other way around on the luggage scales. 
Right. You're holding it upside down yeah, relative yeah, yeah, to its yeah. intended orientation. Right, right, right. <laughs> and so whatever you have the balloon tied to to keep it stationary while you're filling it, do you just yeah. put that the scale between that and the balloon? Uh, they yeah, actually did a lot of hand holding when I saw the launch. Yeah. I would agree that one of the things I would love to see as an upgrade mm -hmm. is some sort of rig yeah. that you mount the base of the, you mount the balloon filling yeah. connector on yep. and the scale is built into that and yep. no one has to wrestle the balloon other than keep right. it safe while it's initially Absolutely. filling and Absolutely. then you only actually manhandle the balloon when you go to take it out for sure. deployment. Yep. Yep. But right now, and you'll see this tomorrow, there's a lot of manhandling of the balloon right there now. There is and I'm not uh, terribly happy with that either. Uh, we've we introduced some uh, some options in the past, we've tried them and uh, it's just uh, you know, slightly frustrating that uh, we haven't gone with those for you know, full production runs. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, it's again, we're especially at the level yeah. we're at. I think for a first time out the right. gate, it's yeah, yeah. acceptable. I mean, it seems to be oh, yeah. working for you. It may not be that's desirable, but it's working. That's why we've stuck with it because it's worked in the past, you know. Yeah, uh, and but I can see mm -hmm. one of the things that some of us might contribute back if we yeah. do enough launches is like. Okay, we're ready to do a uh, a more sophisticated yeah. filling s yeah. station yeah. to make weighing the balloons lift and all right. that work out and, and uh, keep it stable while we're filling it. Improving the accuracy of measuring the, the lift of the balloon, that's that's somewhere that uh, we really could use uh, well, some improvements in this whole process. Cool. Well, I... Uh, I expect that we'll want to continue doing these, so yeah. as we start to, to ramp up to speed with them, um, we'll certainly keep that also in yeah. mind as an item on the wish list, and maybe some of us will talk about tackling that as a small project. Because I think that would yeah. be a very achievable project um, once you were used enough to this that you really understood what the workflow was and could right. do something that fit into the workflow. Sure, sure, sure. Um, are there other pieces of this? So, so this is this would be fine right now as is mm -hmm. for uh, for benign launch conditions or a protected uh, setup location. Okay. Uh, but if uh, if you're setting out in the open, okay, setting up out in the open, and uh, you've got any any wind at all, you need something to hold the balloon down as it's filling. Gotcha. Otherwise, it'll whip around. It can can be dangerous to itself. So for outside mm -hmm. setup, come on, add and would uh, add some kind of uh, tarp or cover that can be used to hold down the balloon during the filler. To hold down the balloon. Uh, something nice and and soft that protects the balloon would, would be even better. We've, we've used a couple different things. The problem with using tarps is they're often laid on the ground and used for other purposes. Yeah. They'll get dirty. But like if we had a dedicated tarp that was the yeah. cover tarp yeah. versus yeah, yeah, the yeah. tarp that went on the ground while right. it was laid out and being while you were setting up. Right. You can have a cover made of a tarp that was the designated yeah. cover and it stays clean. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Clean is key. That's the clean. Thing. Clean is key, yeah. Clean is key. All right. And I don't know where they I know that they have a launch site chosen. I think it's where they do um, the New Mexico balloon fiesta launches. Okay. So I don't know if there's any yeah, they Greg Moran, who mm -hmm. is the Vice President yeah. of the Mach 30, yeah. uh, and was on the video. I don't know, have you seen yes. uh, the yeah, Aries yeah. Night? Yeah. yeah, he was the first presenter. He's out in Albuquerque. Yeah. And he's uh, the guy that's he's, online in the He's document. the guy that's, right. uh, that's typing away in the document, asking right. questions. Um, with, is the project lead on that end of things, on the actual build cool. and launch. Cool. Um, and has taught, and he routinely volunteers with the the big fiesta, yeah. the balloon fiesta in New Mexico. I'm going there this fall. So, um, we'll so have to say up so you can meet up with Greg yeah, and some be, of the key oh, Well, Greg will be Greg will be deployed. He'll be deployed this year. The key uh, I'm sure. The rest of the build okay. folks from this mission yeah. will be out there. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that'd be, that'd be great. Cool. That'd be wonderful. 
as long as I don't spend too much of that vacation doing work related stuff, my fiance <laughs> would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Understood. But fun balloon stuff is always good. Yeah. Well, and having hackers just hang out because yeah, they're yeah, not going to yeah. make you do work unless you want to. <laughs> but um, you know, just no, meeting the people. Love to, to, to meet these folks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Anything else that we need to consider? Let's see, thanks, regulator hose. Uh, fill connector uh, again is uh, is handy, uh, not absolutely essential. Um, uh, uh, yeah. If you don't have one, then you've got to have some way of attaching the balloon to the hose. Gotcha. Well, it looked like it was a pretty yeah. simple build. It is. It really is. So yeah. I would love to see. Th yeah. This is one of those things where, whereas with the cut down system, it seems yeah. like there's some complexity there. This looked like a simple enough critter that yeah. we should try to capture that yeah. design yeah, yeah. because that seems like a win. Yeah. Like that's worth the $15 in parts or whatever yeah. it is and the couple hours of build time and the hour of documentation yep. to make things easy on yep. on day of flight. Yep. And uh, yeah. we have a have an improved system that we we've tried a couple times but still haven't uh, implemented in our general general launches. And I can describe that to you as well. Cool. Greg, uh, Greg did say that they're going to be able to leverage the experience of the hot air balloon ground crew operations oh, in Albuquerque. <laughs> Um, and he says, as far as meeting the key labbers, he says, sounds great, come early for the Maker Faire. So, uh, they have a Maker Faire there. They're going to do a little mini Maker Faire. Yeah. And, and with so any luck, we'll huh. have a uh, little test stand there. It's huh. the 23rd. Okay. I don't remember, but okay. I, I don't know. I, I also really don't know, know when, the, um, okay. when the balloon you know, I don't fiesta have is. Don't my calendar. I thought that was in October. They may be far enough apart that that's okay. hard to do in, in one trip. We should find out because he's absolutely right. The the mini maker fair is going to be a lot of fun, and there'll be more Mach 30 stuff there. And this balloon will probably be shown off at least in concept at the mini maker cool. fair. I'm sure if they if we get a couple of flights underneath our belt, they'll put that in the mini maker fair too. Yeah. All right. Um, gloves are by. Don't need to build our own gloves. Tarp. The the layout tarp is a buy. We'll get into how big does it need to be when we do build materials. Sure. The helium tanks and the helium are a rent, rent slash buy. You buy the helium and you rent the tanks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You said the regulator is is a is a. Yeah. Uh, it's it's we buy ours. Yeah. Because we have uh, we have one. Uh, In order of magnitude, what is a regulator cost? It's been it's actually been a couple of years since I bought. I don't, I don't remember. It's, it's less. Is it less than hundred dollars? Okay, it's a significant part of it's our budget. It's a significant part so of the budget. We should yeah. find out if we yeah. can rent one. Yeah. With the tanks. Right. Okay, this time around. But obviously, if this yeah. is a piece of kit that is you upgrade yeah. in capability, you want to have your own because you want to stop renting it. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is possible, like I said, to use one that's uh, a regular that's used for filling uh, small helium balloons. Okay. It's kind of a pain, but it's it is possible. I think a lot of people use it just because that's something that's well, we standard. Well, I think what we want to do the first pass yeah. is when we when we go and find, we source the tanks and the yeah. helium, yeah. we should talk to them about a regulator of the right kind. Yeah. I still let's treat this as a bill of materials yeah. item yeah. Uh, yeah. and see whether or not they will rent one to us. Right. Because yeah. another fifteen bucks for the day or twenty bucks yeah. for the day right. is different than a hundred and fifty dollars out of a thirty dollars out of a three hundred dollar budget. Absolutely understand, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, uh, you know, our budgeting is is a little different because you know we plan for the long term. You know, yeah, we're going to well, keep doing this for. Yeah, years. well, I mean, you guys already have enough experience that you know you're going to keep doing this. This is about, yeah, you yeah. know, it's not just even us. What we want to do is provide an opportunity so if another hackerspace sees yeah. this, or another, or a school that's yeah. not connected to Adler sees yeah. this, yeah, folks can find three hundred dollars or so. Right. to make something like this happen. Yep. But when the buy-in yeah. to to just be able to talk about spending three hundred dollars right. is another three or four hundred dollars of yeah. infrastructure, you yeah. then suddenly it's harder to get over that first hump of getting in, uh, of getting into it. Yeah. But once you're into it, then we also yeah. want to we want to work up to what is necessary to support this in the long haul. Right. right? So the first one's kind of like the uh, the first hit's free. The first right. hit's cheap. <laughs> right. 
and we want to get you into it. Sure. So that's why I'm really struggling with that three hundred dollar barrier to sure to keep us on the stick. Um, the fill connector is something we build. It is, yeah. And the scale is something we buy. And the uh, the cover is something we buy. Awesome. So I'm super excited that so far I have two things that I have to build, one of which I know from experience is simple, and one of which is probably pretty simple. Mm -hmm. That's super awesome to me. What was the cover that you said that you had to buy? It's just the tarp? Uh, it's, a, a, it's a clean, so there's a tarp that goes on the ground, so let's just make sure the picture is clean here in terms of what you're seeing too. There's a tarp we lay out on the ground because we need to unfold the balloon when we start filling it, and it's a place that the balloon can sit so it's not on a dirty ground, okay. be it grass or be it the dirty hangar floor. Right. But if we're out in, a, in the field doing setup, in addition to that tarp, we need something, and it can be another tarp, but it has so to be designated as the cover tarp, and it must not touch the ground so it doesn't get dirty, or ish, ish. It has to be kept clean because it's going to be thrown over the balloon while it fills so that you have some way of managing the balloon as it fills so the wind can't take it away from you. And I'm assuming that that means there are crew placed on the various corners or something yeah. like that to yeah, help yeah. manage the balloon physically right. while it's right. filling and, be, and being hooked up to the train. Right, right. Does yeah, that make sense? Wait down the corner. It's still another tarp, but it's a tarp for the yeah. special purpose of yeah. I, oh yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure. sure. No, nope. just, just want to make sure I was clear. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm taking pictures of this, and sure. Chris Craig wants me to text him to him. Right? Great. And what we, one of the things that we need to do is turn these flip chart sheets into an actual diagram. Right. And post the diagram. I just figured if I could text oh, him right, right now, yes. then he'd be able to give us feedback. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anything else that would? No, I'm seeing a, a no, seeing the wheels turn. That seems pretty good. Yeah. All right. So then the other thing we need is chase and recovery. with the other fairly complex piece of kitsch, the actual flight vehicle, we'll do a little list of functionality, what is this thing sure. to do? Sure, sure. And yeah. I, I know one of them has got to be, it has to track. It's got to actually be able to follow the balloon. Mm -hmm. It's got to be able to track the balloon and go to the balloon right. on landing. And then, um, and then recover the balloon. Anything else this thing has to, this system has to be able to accomplish? No, that's it. All right, so I'm going to go on a limb here. And even tracking is not absolute necess uh, absolutely necessary. Uh, okay. If yeah. you, you, you it might be that you have some system that only works once the payloads are back on the ground. Okay, so as to really, instead of track, as to be able to locate the yeah. balloon landing site. Yeah. Awesome. Oh. Hey, 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 welcome to the meeting. Okay. Uh, I'm still on candid camera. Oh, okay, I have to run this real quick. Though. No worries. We're uh, nearing the end of block diagram phase and okay. It definitely looks like the big complexity is obviously the tracking system. Yeah. Go yeah. no figure. I <laughs> think we all knew that coming into here, but nice to see it anyway. Okay, so the real thing has to do is locate the balloon landing site and then go to the balloon landing, take you to the balloon landing yeah. site, and then have the tools necessary to recover the balloon when it is not just sitting at your feet. Yeah, that uh, that's a, a real nice thing. <laughs> that, that can open up a can of worms because uh, uh, recovering from a tall tree, there aren't too many good ways of doing that. Gotcha. Well, let's hit the first two because yeah. those are musts. If you yeah. don't get to the if you don't know where the balloon is, and you don't get to the balloon. Generally speaking, yeah. the rest of it's moved. Right. Right. Um, and then if you've got some things that you guys particularly like to have along, let's capture those right. uh, and not get too hung up on all the ways things can go horribly wrong. Let's go with the yeah. stuff that you guys wouldn't leave home without. Sure, sure, sure.
not counting the American Express Club. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so locating the balloon landing site. Okay, uh, this is where. Or actually, hold on, one more thing. Yeah. I just, I think there's a great big box everything else lives in, which is some sort of vehicle. Yeah. We are assuming that we have to go hunt the bloody thing down. Right. Right. There's a car, a van, a truck, or something that we're going to put right. the rest of this kitch into. Right. Yeah, and, and our and our crew. Right, and the kind of vehicle you use uh, that's determined by you know, a host of factors. Uh, how many people are you taking along? When we uh, just have a couple people, we'll take a personal vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, if we've got a group of uh, school kids, we'll take two 15 passenger vans. Um, and so you own your own vehicle and you run the 15 passenger van. Sure. Uh, here in the Midwest, uh, we don't have to worry about having all terrain vehicles, uh, you know, four wheel drive, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. If we're out west in Albuquerque and you've got to trace, chase through, you know, 10 miles of BLM land to get to your landing site. You might want, you might have different requirements. Sure, sure. And so the big thing here is carry crew and gear to landing site. Mm -hmm. And it needs to suitable for terrain and yeah. crew. Yeah. Which all makes perfect sense to me. No, it might be the same vehicle that you use to uh, carry all of your launch equipment, yeah. uh, but it doesn't have to be the same. Right. And, and conceptually, from a system standpoint, mm -hmm. if you were launching out your back door, right. you may not need to haul your gear That's right. for deployment, but you would still absolutely have to have some vehicle right. to carry the chase crew right. to recover the vehicle, right. to right. recover the, the flight vehicle. So, but that's a good point, too, that if you're launching a remote site from where you did build and set up, right. that uh, you would obviously need a vehicle. You'd have to transport all the stuff that went with launch and the flight vehicle to your launch site. Mm -hmm. I'm actually summarizing that for the benefit of the bloody camera. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. All right, so we got a vehicle yep. carrying our stuff, yep. and we got to locate the balloon landing site. Okay. Uh, and the system you use to do that depends on what kind of uh, tracking system you have in the balloon. Okay. So we need some sort of. Yeah. And there are two main ways of going with that. So you need some sort of box in the car yep. that uh, receives okay, that's bad. E receives receives uh, tracking signal from the balloon. And there are choices you're saying here for what that looks like. Right, right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so let me just describe the system that we yes, use for sure. hours here. I'm going to flip pages for yeah. a moment because this looks a little bit more like design to me. So this is um, the Adler. Um, yeah, not just us. So many people use this, this type of system. Uh, Adler at all. Establishing the minimums is important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that. That will be necessary for for this kind of system. Yep. And uh, the the tracking uh, 
protocol, I guess, is uh, it's the, the APRS system. So this is this is a, a ham radio defined position reporting service. Which kind of makes it really useful for what you need it to do. Yeah. People use it in their, in their vehicles. They have uh, these kinds of transmitters on dogs if they're out on the field, all kinds of things. Okay. Uh, and what it does is uh, uh, if it has a GPS uh, receiver incorporated in it, which is pretty much essential, uh, then it, uh, it translates the GPS positions uh, into uh, this, this APRS uh, packets and uh, broadcasts it out periodically. No, we have like our set for a minute. Is it? We have our set for a minute, yeah. So you don't want to overcrowd. No, you want to have yeah. it often enough that you can you know, find it when you need to, uh, or you know get get a decent number, decent resolution. Uh, for for us, that's more important. Decent resolution and how the point tracks. So yeah, so we don't lose kids' uh, interest or our <laughs> interest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, I, you could have to put out positions every hour, uh, for instance. Uh, but we've got flights that last 90 minutes, going up half hour. Yeah, sure. We want sufficient resolution without crowding out the you know other users. Because uh, gotcha. Whereas uh, while while you can use this system on uh, any amateur frequency. There is kind of a national standard uh, here in the States that's, uh, I believe it's 144.390 megahertz. And the benefit of using that standard frequency is that um, you have a lot of amateurs with ground stations and other vehicles that are listening to that frequency. And they're tied into the internet. When they receive these APR signals, they forward them onto kind of a central clearinghouse, one of one of a few perhaps, uh, and that's of, of great benefit because that gives you another way of picking up that position if you can't receive the signal directly, and you have access to the internet. Mm -hmm. You can dial into, you can 